All right, so we're back with part two of our NestJS tutorial. So in the last video, we went over all of the files. We went through the file structure of our project. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually start up the application because I we, I actually didn't get a chance to do that. But we're going to start up the application. And I'm actually going to change this to port 4,000. Actually, I'm going to change this to uh, 8,000. No. I'll, you can use any port you want. I'm just going to change this to port. Uh, I'll do 5,001. And I'm going to go ahead and just run yarn start dev. So that'll run this dev script. So it pretty much just will watch, it'll just pretty much watch our file. So whenever we make changes, it'll restart. So let's hit, let's hit enter. And you can see that we have our logs over here. And you can see over here that there is this router explorer. And you can see that it literally mapped this route over here so if we were to so this is actually a good way to keep track of what is actually being picked up in your application so in case if you ever are concerned if a controller is actually um if it's actually being uh, uh used or if it's actually being mapped you can tell by look at the logs but if we go to our api you can see localhost port 5001 we get hello world and that is from the uh the return that is the return value of the method get hello from app service and that is being returned when we call this dot app service dot get hello for our get hello function inside the app controller so let's go ahead and actually uh delete everything so what we're going to do is we're going to delete the app service.ts file the app controller.ts file and the app controller.spec.ts file so we're going to delete these three files and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create our own module because we don't want to actually put everything uh like we don't want to put individual controllers inside the app.module.ts we should really create our own module but that belongs to the correct domain and then we can uh put everything in there and that'll be imported into the app module before we do that though let me actually go ahead and remove these two imports as well as this and this okay so what we're going to do is we're going to use the nest cli so let me exit i'm going to go ahead and type nest and i'm going to go ahead and type generate so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and generate a module and let's just say for example we're building an application that has customers and customers might have products or they might have uh, purchase or payments right so typically we'd want to separate each module into its own into its own domain and in the documentation, they actually do kind of, they actually do go in depth about uh, what modules are. And you can see that um, it's a way how we can organize our application. So instead of putting everything inside of the root module, so that was the app.module.ts file, you can actually create your own module. Okay. And this becomes very useful because, you, like I said, you can keep everything encapsulated in its own module. And it allows you to pretty much keep everything more organized so you don't have to put everything in just one single module. Okay, and there's a lot of uh, a, lot, a lot of documentation that tells you on how to uh, configure your modules to do literally whatever you want. But let's go ahead and just generate a module. So we'll generate a customer's module. So this will just be, this will represent the customer's domain. So you can think about every single endpoint for customers uh, will pretty much be registered in a controller that belongs to this customer module, okay? So now that we have our module, you can see that this is what the module looks like. It looks very similar to how the app module.ts file looks like, except it just doesn't have imports, controllers, or providers. Not yet, at least. We can always add them, okay? One more thing to mention is that when you use the CLI, it will automatically add the imports to the app module inside this imports array. So that's really nice. If you don't use the CLI, if you want to create your own uh, module, like from scratch like this, you just have to uh, import it manually. Okay, so let's go ahead and create the controllers. So we're going to create a customer's controller. And remember, the controller is actually going to be responsible for controlling the request and the response. So in, if you've gotten used to using express before you may have not really heard much about what a controller is you're used to using the callback function and using the response object to send uh to send responses back so we have something called a controller 
And what a controller is, is it's responsible for handling uh, incoming requests and literally returning uh, whatever response we need to return to whoever made that request. So you typically the client. So let's say, for example, you have a front end application that needs to make a request to some endpoint that returns a list of uh, users. So let's say it returns five users. So you would have a controller called users controller that handles all of that logic. Okay, it's going to handle the request, it's going to control the request by it can, it can do things such as checking to see if the user is authenticated, it can check to see if the user had a correct query parameter, etc, etc. And once that's done, it can send back the response. Everything is done inside the controller level. Okay, so and you'll see how easy it is to uh, use controllers. So let's go ahead and generate a controller. So you can actually just type nest G for generate. And we'll go ahead and type controller. And I want this controller to be inside the customers module. So I'm going to pass in customer slash. So that's basically saying it's going to belong inside the customers folder. But I want it to be inside the controllers folder. And I'll call this customers. Okay, so what this will do is it'll generate a controllers folder inside the customers folder. And it'll create another customers folder inside controllers because we might have other controllers too inside the customers module. So that's why I'm, cre I'm creating its own folder over here. So for example, we may have something like customer, customers um, details or something. I don't know, just an example. So we want to keep everything as organized as possible. So you can see when we generate a controller using the CLI tool, it creates uh, two TS files. So it creates a spec file and it creates a controller file. So we're going to work primarily with the controller file. Okay. And you can see inside customers.module.ts, it will it'll add the customer's controller to the controller's uh, property inside an array. Okay, so you need to make sure that your controller classes are actually uh, inside this array. Otherwise, it will not map your controller routes. So your controller routes will not even be accessible. Okay, so now that we have a controller, let's go ahead and get started with setting up a route. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use the get request uh, annotation or decorator. And we can just leave this empty. Or we, you can specify a pair of empty strings or, or empty string. But if you want to specify an explicit route, you can just provide the actual uh, route value inside this uh, inside this uh, print, inside these parentheses. So what I'll do is I'll just simply say gets customer, and I'll just return a customer. So let's just say email Danny at gmail.com created at, we'll do uh, new dates, and we'll just say ID one. And let me actually move the ID up here. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's actually try to call this customer's route. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here. If I refresh, you're gonna see, well actually we need to start application, so let's do that. Let me actually start the application in uh, VS Code. So that way we can actually use this terminal that I have opened up to generate any files that I need to. Okay, so you can see that right over here in the logs in Router Explorer, you can see that it mapped this slash customers route. Okay, so let me leave the logs over here and let's go back to over here. If I refresh, you can see that it says status code 404 cannot get. So this is by default what Nest.js will do for you. So let's go to the customers route and you can see that we get the response back. So what we did was we made a request to slash customers and the corresponding controller that is responsible for handling all routes for slash customers took care of this request and it responded to us with this object. It has an ID, email, and created at. So that is what the controller is responsible for. It's literally responsible for controlling the incoming request and, and returning back some kind of response. And that response could be anything. Okay, it can be a, a successful response, it can be a forbidden response, an unauthorized response, whatever it is. Now, one thing that I do also want to mention when you use a framework like Nest.js is that you typically do not want to practice uh, putting everything in one single file or one single function call. 
So Nest.js, one of the reasons why I like it is because it introduces actual uh, good practices and it enforces, it, it actually uh, teaches you how to uh, practice certain concepts such as the, the, the dry rule, which stands for don't repeat yourself. So essentially we don't want to put everything in one single function call. And we also want to separate concerns as much as we can. Because when you have a function that does so many things, and especially those things aren't even what it's mainly responsible for, it actually makes the function a lot harder to test. So what we want to do is instead of actually putting everything inside the controller, instead of handling all the business logic in the control layer, what we can do instead is we can actually create a service, okay? And the service, what it will do is it will actually take care of handling our business logic, okay? So when it comes to doing things such as, let's say you want to uh, perform some kind of uh, business logic, you want to check to see if the user uh, is in the database, you want to check to see if the user has a certain field that is set to true, you want to, set to, you want to check to see what the user's status is, et cetera, et cetera, and if the status is you know, something like approved, then you want to perform some of their logic, some of their database call. Typically, you do not want to do that at the controller layer. You want to do that at the service layer. Another thing to mention is that uh, if you think of it in MVC terms, the service layer essentially is, is a layer that com communicates between the controller as well as the repository layer. So when I say repository, typically the repository layer is what is responsible for interacting with the database. So uh, performing reads, updates, or deletes, or uh, um, or create, right? Like if you're creating data, the repository would take care of that because it directly interacts with the database, okay? For the service layer, that is what we are using the service for. So let's go ahead and create a service. And once we create it, it'll actually make a lot more sense. So let's use the CLI tool. So we'll do nest G service. And the service is going to be inside the customers module. So we'll do customers slash services. And then we'll just do customers. Like I said, we might have other services that belong to this customers module. So that's why I'm creating a folder for them. So you can see right over here, we have our service uh, customers service class. So now you can see over here that in the customers.module.ts file, we have a providers property and that's also an array. And you can see the customers service is a provider. Okay. And what that means is that we can actually uh, use dependency injection to inject this customer service anywhere we want. So for example, if I were to create a constructor, I can follow the same example that we had saw from the app controller. So I can do private customers service, and then we'll type annotated to customer service. Okay, and now I can reference this customer service and call whatever methods it has. So let's go ahead and let's move this return. We'll create a method inside customer service and let's pretend like this customer service class uh has like methods that it can that it can interact with the database so for example find customer will return a customer okay and then what we'll do is we'll return this dot customer service dot find customer so what's going to happen is we're going to call the customer's service instances find customer class and it's going to return this uh, this object over here, and that will be returned as a response. So if I refresh the page, you're going to see that it's literally the same thing. Now, one more thing that I do want to mention that I completely forgot to mention is that you'll notice that uh, your files are actually conveniently named uh, after whatever type of uh, whatever type of resource or uh, schematic it is. So, for example, for your controllers, by default, they're going to be generated as uh, they're going to be generated with the dot controller dot ts extension for services they are generated with dot service dot ts and with uh, modules they're generated with dot module dot ts okay so it's a really nice convention uh to help you keep track of what is what so it's easier to navigate through uh your file system okay um so that is pretty much it when it comes to uh our controller layer as well as our service layer 
okay we pretty much set up a custom controller and we have our own custom route and that route uh, pretty much will call the customer's service find customer method and what happens is it returns an object so what we did was we pretty much encapsulated uh, the logic of returning a user from and we encapsulate that inside the customer's service class and now the controller can actually just communicate with the service layer and just get whatever it needs to get and we can return that as a response okay so that's gonna be pretty much it for this second tutorial um, in the next tutorial, we're going to continue with uh, more Nest.js related stuff, such as setting up post requests, setting up uh, requests and responses, and et cetera, et cetera. Like I said, we're going to go fully in depth with this tutorial. So I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.